You may be feeling a bit frustrated at this point, going over all these different types of bifurcations, memorizing all these different normal forms. It's long past time to see some actual examples. But if you think about it, we've already seen a few examples of these earlier in this volume. Recall the logistic population model that we looked at, dx dt equals rx times quantity k minus x where x is a population size, r and k are constants. If we think about r as a constant, but we think of k, that carrying capacity, as a parameter, then this is precisely the normal form for a transcritical bifurcation. And there's at least one other example that we have seen that is straight out of the normal forms. That's the buckling beam model from an earlier chapter where dx dt equals c times x minus x cubed. x is a deflection of a thin beam, and c was a constant that had to do with the force that was applied to that beam. Now, if we think about that c as a parameter, then this is precisely the normal form for a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. So, are you happy? I don't know. It would be nice to see some real examples of bifurcations. The logistic population model, I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. I, I can't really visualize what that transcritical feels like. The buckling beam model, that's a little bit better. So inspired by that, let's turn to some examples of bifurcations that are expressed in mechanical systems, something where your physical intuition can kick in. Let's start with a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation, and I'm going to simulate this buckling beam model by having a weight that is pulled between two springs. Those springs start off in tension, so there's a single stable equilibrium where there is zero deflection. You're going to have to ignore the vibrational bouncing here. That's an artifact of the simulation with springs. Now, if we change that parameter from having those springs in tension to compression, then what happens is this stable equilibrium becomes unstable and a pair of stable equilibria split off. And you can see the symmetry in this problem means there's one on the left, one on the right. This has to do with which way you're buckling. That's a nice example. For a subcritical pitchfork bifurcation, we're going to change the system. We're going to look at an inverted pendulum with a magnetic bob, where there's a second magnet on top of it. If we start off with that magnet having repulsive force, then we have a single unstable equilibrium at zero deflection from the vertical. A, a slight push and that's it, you've fallen away. On the other hand, if we think of that top magnet as a parameter and change it from repulsion to attraction, then that equilibrium at zero deflection moves from unstable to stable. And there's a pair of unstable equilibria off to the side. What I mean by that is if you, if you push that pendulum far enough away, then the gravitational pull overcomes the magnetic pull. You've got that unstable equilibrium and you can, you can get close to that unstable equilibrium, but then it just pushes you away. That's a nice example of a subcritical pitchfork bifurcation. Let's turn to a transcritical bifurcation next. This one is a little more difficult to execute in a simple mechanical system, but here's something that I came up with. Let's take that same inverted pendulum with a magnetic bob and a magnet at the top that is parametrized, whether it's pulling or pushing. But now we're going to break the symmetry of this problem by installing a spring on the right hand side that is neutral, but if you push against it, it pushes back. Okay, now when you have a repulsive magnetic force, so that you have an unstable equilibrium at zero deflection. If you bump it to the left, then it falls over, unstable. If you bump it to the right, then it begins to fall over, but then that spring catches it and captures you at a stable equilibrium. So on one side of the bifurcation, unstable at zero, stable off to the right. On the other hand, if we reverse 
the polarity of that magnet at the top. Now, zero is a stable equilibrium. It's pulling in. But just as before with the subcritical pitchfork, if I push enough off to the left, then I go past the unstable equilibrium to the left and I fall over. So we've gone from stable, unstable to unstable, stable. That's a transcritical bifurcation. For a saddle node, we're going to have a much easier time finding a physical example of that. We've already seen one in the context of coupled oscillators with different speeds. But for a more mechanical example, there's a classic example. And what this involves is a pendulum that is hanging at its stable equilibrium at the bottom, but a torque is being applied. So what we're doing is we're, we're applying a torque to that pendulum and that that overcomes some of the gravity and you've got this stable equilibrium where it's deflected a little bit. Now, if we keep increasing, increasing that torque, then this stable and this unstable equilibrium come together and they get closer and closer and then they collide and annihilate. And that's a saddle node bifurcation. And past that, the torque is sufficient that you just keep spinning. You just keep going and going and going. There are no equilibria at all you're spinning around that circle. All of the simple bifurcations that we have been learning, they appear. They're all over the place. We have seen them in nice physical mechanical systems, but they appear elsewhere as well. Keep your eyes open because we're going to be seeing them in later chapters and later volumes.